Hey guys, what's going on, and welcome to the top 5 facts about Mike Schmidt. As we know in the first game, Mike Schmidt worked as a security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, so we're going to be doing top 5 facts on him. Anyways, uh, the top 5 facts were really hard to find, so that's the reason why we're not doing a top 10. So if you guys do enjoy, uh, make sure to hit the like button, and let's get started. Fact number 5, we're actually going to be answering a question. And that question is, why does Mike Schmidt come back to... Freddy Fazbear's Pizza every night, and the real theme of the game is the Torador March. That is a song you hear Freddy play on his music box after the power goes out. And if you guys don't know the history behind the Torador March, that wouldn't make as much sense, so I will go ahead and let you guys know what the theme behind the Torador March is. So, there is a opera called Karma, and that's where the Torador March comes from. Now, the bullfighter. In Act 2 actually sings the Torador March, or performs, whatever you want to call it. It is an opera, so I guess it would be performing. And it's really about the glory from the crowd and the thrill he gets from fighting the bulls. And that kind of makes sense, how Mike is fending off the animatronics. So the reason why he comes back is most likely because of his thrill-seeking. But we really do have the fact of him coming back every night. The truth is, the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise has been shrouded in mystery ever since the demo for the first game came out. The entire game has been about solving these mysteries that string on to each other from the first game to the third game, and putting them all in a timeline and really trying to figure out the meaning behind the game and the meaning behind all the events that have happened in the game. And if we really think about it, one thing that's been a mystery besides the identity of the killer is the security guards. The fact is about them, you have never been able to see even one of the security guards, Mike, Jeremy, and the one in the third game is even unnamed. So not only do we have the fact that you can't see the security guards, but we literally know nothing about them. All we know is that they come back every night for some unknown reason. Now, the only thing about Mike is that you do actually get to see his eyes. We do know that he has blue eyes. Because if you die in the first game and you brighten up the image when you're stuffed into the Freddy Fazbear suit, you can actually see your eyeballs popping out of the front of the animatronic eye holes. And we can see that Mike actually does have blue eyes, but that's the only detail or picture we've seen of any of the security guards. We literally know nothing. One thing we all do know about the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise and all the buildings is how dangerous it truly is to work there. It's pretty much a suicide game, uh, going there every night, just sitting there, trying to defend yourself from the animatronics. Especially in the first and second game, where there's multiple ones trying to get you at the same time. And if we really think about it, you don't even get paid that well for doing these ridiculous tasks. In fact, Mike Schmidt only gets paid $120.50 for his work at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And he doesn't even get paid that 50 cents until the sixth night. So for working the shift that he normally works for $4 an hour, he only gets paid 50 cents for the entire time, which is completely ridiculous. I don't even understand. That's downright insulting for somebody to work a job that'll probably kill them. And they only get 50 cents overtime. Come on, guys. So as we just discussed, Mike does a absolutely insane job for an incredibly low amount of pay. And we don't even know what year Mike is working during. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2, when you're playing as Jeremy, you're not actually playing as Mike, but at the end, you at least get a date on your paycheck. In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, the first game to come out in the entire series, Mike isn't given a date on his check. The final parts of it are just labeled XX. Now, the most like the year that this game most likely took place during could have been 1990, 1993, or 1999. However, we're still not sure. We don't even really have this type of animatronic technology today, but we don't know what year Mike is even working during. He could have even been given a phony check considering that there's XX on it. Like, how are you going to go in and cash that if nobody knows when the check was written? This thing could be ancient. Uh, this could just be a check that's meant to bounce. You don't actually get your payment. As we know, the company is extremely shady and will do whatever it can to save money, so Mike is an extremely good employee for dealing with all this, but we really don't know why. 
Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this video on the top five facts, or I guess really top five things we know slash don't know about Mike Schmidt, if you did enjoy it, uh, make sure to leave a comment and suggest what kind of video you'd like to see next time. I plan on doing some Super Smash Brothers stuff and maybe some more Five Nights at Freddy's stuff, but you guys let me know what you want to see. Anyways, I'm about to get out of here. Uh, as always, have a good one, and talk to you later. Bye!